simple tricks for you to get better placements and hopefully more wins in Call of Duty Black Ops 4 Blackout Mode. Stay tuned throughout the entire video and hopefully these tricks will help you out as well. How's it going everybody? It's Kevin here once again giving you in our tips and tricks video. Today we're talking about Call of Duty Blackout. If you enjoy these tips and tricks videos, please be sure to tap that like button as he lets me know you want to see some more content like this. Leave a comment down below what you guys have been using as well while playing this mode if you've really been enjoying it. If you want to stay up to date with on the channel, make sure to tap subscribe because we upload awesomeness all the time. So let's get right into the top five tricks for you to get better placements and more wins in Call of Duty Black Ops 4 Blackout Mode. Now these tips are not exactly in any specific order, but these are five things I've found to work out better. So number one on this list here is to have a later drop. A lot of players like to drop in the first half of the helicopter flight, which is odd. It does make sense because you get to that loot faster. But the thing is though, a lot of people are thinking that same thing as well. I've come to notice that the later you drop on that flight, the less people there are in that second half of that helicopter flight. So you have less contention for loot people around you and just less craziness. And so you can focus more on getting your items together to hopefully stay alive throughout the rest of the map. Now you do run into this issue of, you know, probably the circles can be somewhere more towards the middle area of the map so you will have to make a trek across it to get back to where the circle is going to be after its first movement but that gets into my tip later on in this video that I'll tell you about more. Number two on this list is to drop in an unnamed area. What I mean by that is that there are tons of these little settlements throughout these named areas on the map. You know, places like Fracking Tower, Firing Range, Estate, you know, Asylum, Turbine, all these other certain areas. You know, they have really good items, yes, but it also brings a lot of uh, players coming to your area. So it's a lot of high risk, high reward areas. I've come to notice that you're, it's a lot easier to stay alive throughout the rest of the match if you go into these unnamed settlement areas yes the loot isn't as great but it's still good to where you can actually put up a decent fight you can still find yourself a decent ar sometimes a sniper rifle or dmr you can get at least tier 2 armor for most of the time and get plenty of ammo and heals and everything else in between. So dropping in these named areas on the map is probably not the best strategy. I've come to find a lot of success in dropping in these lesser named areas, looting up and then hunting for kills rather than just grabbing whatever I can and have to get the kill right away because it's a, you know, it's just like I said, it's high risk, high reward and I find just more success and staying alive longer when I don't drop into these named areas. St drop outside the named areas in these little settlements is generally the better situation. My third tip is moving with the circle. What I mean by that is that you don't exactly have to constantly worry about getting back into the circle as soon as the map is updated saying this is where the circle is going to be and you just instantly move to that direction it's not the best strategy you really want to wait until the circle starts to move on near you and then you move with the circle what that does it eliminates the angles of being shot at basically uh, much like in your standard multiplayer map you want to stick to the outside edge because it reduces the amount of angles you can get shot from why well, get shot from 360 degrees when you're in the middle of the circle and then sit rather than say on the outside where you kind of limit that to more just about 180 degrees so it's a lot easier for you to manage that so don't feel stressed that you need to move to the circle as soon as it updates you know wait till that uh, fog of war whatever you want to call it kind of closes in on you and then you start moving you can actually outrun the circle and so it's not you don't have to worry about it too much when it comes to making it to that new circle because the storm that closes it on you you are faster than it and if you get caught up in it it's not that big of a deal it's two damage points for every second on the larger circles obviously when the circle gets smaller it does more damage but for those first two maybe even three circles that uh it's not the end of the world or if you get caught in it or you can definitely out chase it as well number four on this list is use audio audio is such a huge component when it comes to doing well in this game it gives you such spatial awareness that it's only gonna benefit you. Now either you have a headset or plug in some earphones into your Xbox or console or PC or whatever platform you're playing on, but you want to have the audio in your ears. Wearing a headset or headphones helps you pinpoint locations where players might be for release hearing gunfire so you know about where they look out for players. And also you can hear footsteps of players if they're not using dead silence, obviously. Uh, but or crouch walking but a lot of times I find myself you know I will hide in a corner and hear them walking around the corner I'll just 
post up in a corner, the guy comes around, I take him out real easy. And for my last tip here is just to make sure you stay patient. I know once you hear a gunfire, see somebody around an area, you probably want to go after him and go for, get them and go for the kill. That's not exactly the best strategy. You generally want to main your advantage as much as possible. Uh, there are plenty of times when I'm playing and I just know that someone's like in a certain area and I have the high ground and it's better just to kind of wait it out, let them come to you, make let them make the mistake and then you take advantage of that. Just because you hear someone in a building doesn't mean you necessarily should go for it. I remember this one time when I was playing and I saw a guy in this little tiny shack and I was like, okay, well, we've put some damage on this guy. We can probably, I can probably push up and go for him. But the thing was, uh, we're by the train station. Train station is a named area. It's a very populated location. So I was making this push. I went from my high ground location down to this little shack and I got flanked by another team as well. And so it would, would have been better is waiting for the hill to close in on that guy because he was the guy was going to have to move out of that building eventually and if he moved out i would have had the easy advantage of having the high ground cover and knowing his location so staying patient is key when it comes to staying alive in blackout so the recap drop later as it, there'd be the less population in the second half of the map for the most part or at least the last third especially drop in an unnamed area as it's less populated it's less stressful and you definitely get a decent amount of loot to where you can put up a good fight obviously you won't be finding many gold tier weapons but you will be finding good stuff like armor tier 2 armor a good assault rifle some attachments a good amount of ammo you don't need to jump into a named area move along with the circle because it reduces your angles of being shot from and it's just yeah, you can also catch players that are probably running around or catch them from behind because they ran into the new circle area too soon. Make sure to use your audio because audio is absolutely important when it comes to performing well and staying alive in this game. And also just make sure for lastly, it's just staying patient. Know that you have the advantage. Let the circle move these players move. Let them make the mistake rather than you going like, well, I'm tired of waiting. I'm just gonna go for it. Anyways guys, that's the end of the video for me. If you enjoyed this kind of tip and trick video and want to see some more videos like this, make sure to tap that like button so let me know want to see some more content like this. Leave a comment down below what your experience has been with the blackout mode. If you found these tips helpful for you. And if you're new to the channel, stay up to date with anything related on here. Make sure to tap subscribe as we upload awesomeness all the time. If you're new to the channel or missing any content from me, check out the videos on the screen right over here. I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace out.